Hello, my lovelies, and welcome to Eargasms, an audiobook review show where we delve into the world of contemporary and indie romance books that make you go, mmm. Please note that all the books that I review contain adult content, so you have been warned. And with that said, here we go. The Hero and the Hacktivist by Pippa Grant. Navy SEAL Red Elliot is at the losing end of Wedding Bingo. You know Wedding Bingo, where you bet on a variety of things, from whose child would be the first to throw up from eating too much cake, to which senior citizen will be nicking the last bottle of champagne. There can be some real bad consequences for losing wedding bingo. I mean, he might have to sleep with his third cousin, Charlie, who has that bad rash and is obsessed by badges and always smells like cabbage. Sorry, our cousin Charlie, you do. Poor Rhett's lost to his brothers mean he is left like a ham sandwich at a bar mitzvah while his brothers go off to have sexy hookups. Scanning the room, a flash of glitter catches his eye. Eloise Jane. She's a nutcase. People give Eloise a wide berth. Not that she's dangerous, but the things that come out of this girl's mouth. Eloise is the drummer for Rhett's sister's band. They are a boy band tribute act. Now, Eloise, most people give a wide berth to. He's a nutcase. Now, she is quirky with a capital Q. Not like those other people who also like the letter Q. Through the grapevine, Rhett has heard that she is an heiress and wastes all her time playing computer games. To look at her, heiress part, not so much. <laughs> the computer gaming part, totally. Dark spiky hair with more tattoos and Navy Seal Rhett, thin like she never eats. And glasses, Rhett's not actually short our prescription. She is so short. It's like her body just gave up growing because she was always constantly sat at a computer desk as a teenager. I mean, the things that come out of this girl's mouth could make a sailor blush. But not our hero. Making an eye contact, she makes a beeline toward Rhett, actually licking her lips as she approaches, only to walk into the glass door, forgetting to pull the door open first. Now, Rhett's sister Parker has warned all of them not to sleep with any of her bridesmaids and crazy pants Eloise is licking her lips at him. Her May West throaty voice asking him if he wants to get down is all he needs. Nobody has to ask for it twice. But they are interrupted, meaning they couldn't actually finish. As they were almost caught by that very person who warned Rhett not to sleep with any of her bridesmaids. Two weeks later, when they all meet up at Rhett's sisters after the honeymoon, the tension between Eloise and Rhett is high. Now, this confuses Eloise because most men, after the first time, go off running. Nobody comes back for seconds, but Rhett, however, is looking at her as if she was the last salt beef bagel right next to the ham sandwich at the bar mitzvah. <laughs> Following her to her bright yellow hummer, yes, bright yellow hummer. After observing her making her way to her hummer, all his Navy SEAL training starts firing off danger signs and the sirens start blurring that this girl is in danger. But what exactly is she hiding? All his SEAL training had told him that this girl is running and she is scared. What exactly has he done this time? This is written by Pippa Grant. Okay, Pippa Grant is a an amazing writer. I read the Happy Cut series where I fell in love with the raccoon George Cooney. She is really clever with the characters and she leaves you wanting more and falling in love and actually knowing them. All her books that I've read so far have really interesting backstories. All the characters have really interesting backstories and you see the world through their eyes. They're not just one dimensional characters. She writes beautifully and she, as I said, she is a really funny writer. I laughed out loud many, many times. Narrated by Maxine Mitchell and Teddy Hamilton. Maxine Mitchell is one of the staples in the romance world. She is very, very good. She has a really lovely voice, but when she does male characters, totally forget that it's a woman doing it. She's absolutely brilliant at it. I think it's the way that she actually delivers the line. She's very good at that because the differentiation between the male voices and the female voice pulls it off each and every time. And I quite like it. And her rhythm 
rhythm is very unique and it totally agrees with me. Like sometimes at the end of a series she'll elongate it and I quite enjoy it. So I like her. Teddy Hamilton is one of my favourites. He has kind of like a laid back, deep, not like a baritone, but he's got a really lovely rhythm to him and his voice always sounds really happy. He's a great performer. I think he's an actor. I'm not too sure, but I think he is a trained actor because he really does pull a lot of emotion out with his work and I absolutely love him. This first thing that I ever heard him was on a book by Sierra Simone called him Brilliant Book. And I remember thinking, God, I love this guy's voice because it's just so neat. Now for the sex scenes. The sex scenes were really fun. I mean, it's all about the dialogue, really. That really makes this a brilliant book. But even the sex scenes are great because they're funny, but they're still hot and they're still sexy and she's still getting done but it also carries that light-heartedness that it should have. And I mean, honestly, the inner dialogue, you wait if you pick up this book. I laughed out so many times because I'm pretty sure that I've had those exact thoughts while making the beats with two backs. So I picked this book because it was Audible plus catalogue, right? And as I started just reading through it, I thought, Oh, this sounds like if there was a previous few books. Although it does work as a standalone, do not get me wrong, by any stretch of the imagination, it does work as a standalone. But there were so many pieces of information that I think, oh my God, that has to be from another book. Because the book was so good, I wanted to know. It is a standalone, so it's not like book two of a series. But I think there's lots of other characters that may have come from or some of her other books because there is a reference to Happy Cat which is in reference to the book that George Cooney is in, which I have read. What it made me do is go onto her page and start looking at all the books and just clicking. <laughs> I'm going to get through this. Because usually in like the two for one sale or the, you know, the free sections, the romance sections, we get the dregs. We never get anything good. So I thought, let me go and check it out and see if we have any good books on there for us romance heads. And yeah, there are on the, did I enjoy this book? Yeah, I did. It was really funny. It was just complex. And it was something that I needed on a really cold winter day. You know, something so magical magical when you get a really good piece of writing. Two narrators who are amazing at their craft and a story that isn't half cocked. So with that, here are my ratings. For the narration, for Maxine, it's a 4.5 and for Teddy, that's also a 4.5. For the sex scenes, that is a high four. I really enjoyed them and I loved the comic timing of it. And also it was hard. <laughs> <laughs> I can't lie. And for the book, it is a really high 4.5 for me. I loved it. With a running time of 7 hours and 34 minutes, you are getting your full money's worth. This is a HEA, a standalone, best friend's brother, and sort of a, a military trope. I really do recommend this book. If you want something funny, quick, uh, but yet gives you the feels, I would recommend this one. I enjoyed it immensely. Um, so have you read it? And if you have, please comment below and let me know what you think. Did you have the same thoughts as I did? Uh, let's start a conversation. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> okay, I guess that's her saying it's time for me to feed her. So with that said, I'm, I'm going to go. Thank you so much for joining me. Please comment like and subscribe so that other people find me and I'll see you next week. Take care. <laughs>